<laughs> yes, I, I have been called in to, uh, to perform marriages and, and I've been called in with, with breakups as well. And in both cases it's my job to remind of innocence uh, because always it's a call for love. Mm. Yeah. And um, yeah, one time I went down to Argentina and it was a big breakup uh, with many emotions and family taking sides and finger pointing and the things that can surround a breakup. A lot of viciousness, but, but I landed and I was greeted by the, the couple that were breaking up and I hugged and I hugged. I just went through my whole experience down there of a couple weeks hugging everyone, reminding everyone that everyone is making decisions based on what they believe. These decisions must always be honored and respected, whatever the decisions are, because everybody's doing the best that they can do. So it was my job to remind everybody, remember the gratitude, remember all the love that was shared. Don't point the finger and think something is going wrong. This is, it's too precious. Our time together is too precious for, for blame and anger. Let the emotions up and let them go. Because <laughs> we need to heal. So it, was, it turned into, yeah, it was very, very healing. And my friend said, thank you for coming. She said, I don't know if I could have made it completely through this without it's such a loving reminder. And the children were most disturbed. They were tempted to take sides with their mother and father and hold intense grievances and said, come to get, come, we must get past this. This is not, this will not bring you love if you continue to hold on to these grievances. And it turned into a beautiful time of healing with the children as well. The oldest daughter was still living at home with her parents. And she felt some guilt around this. She was in her early thirties. And uh, her parents were separating, but they felt some guilt with her living at home. And she sat down and she said, can you help me? I like living with my parents, but I feel I should be independent. I feel I should be on my own, but it's, it's a conflict. I don't want to leave, but I feel I should leave. So I smiled, put my arm around her said, you will accomplish the impossible. I said, what? What do you mean the impossible? I said, you will leave without leaving. Said, How will this happen? <laughs> I, said, I said, you watch. Yes. You watch and see. So before I left, she had moved out of the house. In the short time I was there, she left the house. She moved all of her stuff out of the house. And she moved three houses down on the same street. <laughs> <laughs> come back over to her parents' house every day. We would laugh together. We would eat meals together. She still ate her parents' food. 
She'd bring her wash over to do her wash. <laughs> this, um, this was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, striking, I'm striking a deep chord there with yeah. mom. Yeah. This is a prophecy. <laughs> What is that? And she she did fulfill the prophecy that you will leave without you. Because she loved her parents, but she felt she needed a little space, and that's exactly what happened. So then, then the son came to me. I said, how are you doing? He said, uh, not good. He said, well, tell me what's, what's wrong with your life. And he said, well, I have a beautiful girlfriend. And uh, I love her very dearly. I said, what's the problem? He said, well, she, she is very wealthy. Again, I said, What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem with that? And she's, he's, she's, he said, well, actually, uh, her parents uh, have bought us a house. And uh, it's a very big house. And he said, would you like to come see it? I said, yes, I'll, I'll come. So I go to the house, and it's a big, beautiful house, with terraces, gardens. He's maybe 20, 24 years old. Now he has a girlfriend, and a very nice house. So again I ask him, so what is the problem? Why is your life so hard? He said, well, I don't feel this is my house, and I feel uh, very ashamed uh, that her parents bought me a bigger house than my parents had. I feel, I feel ashamed of all that's been given to me. And I said, ah, so how do you feel? And he said, I feel guilty that I've been given too much, uh, too fast in my life. And I said, well, you know, this house is not your house. But this is a house that comes from God for you to fulfill your purpose. And you have to use this house for God's purposes. That's why it dropped in your lap. He went, I never thought of it that way. He said, you should be grateful that you have a house that you can use for, for the purpose of love. So then, I said, is there any more problems? He said, yes. <laughs> I said, another problem? Yes. He said, what is your problem? He said, uh, I don't have a job. Uh, I get to live in the house, all the food is provided, I have a wonderful girlfriend, but I have no work. I said, what's the problem? He said, I feel guilty, again, that all this is being given to me, so graciously, and I am not working. And he said, my heart is very heavy. So I put my arm around him, and I said to the son, you will accomplish the impossible. <laughs> As I had said to his sister. And he said, what? <clears throat> what is it? What will happen? I said, you will work without working. He said, what does that mean? You will work for God, and you will be provided for. And probably about a year later, he was working with publishing A Course in Miracles in Buenos Aires, 
Argentina. So finally, I was having lunch with their mother, who's a very good friend of mine. And her name is Maria, same as the mother of Jesus. Second name, Christina, the Virgin of Christ. And a French name that's pronounced, you are. You are. Mary, Christ, you are. <laughs> and so I talked with her and I said, uh, how are you doing? She said, I'm so grateful that you're here because it was a shock that my husband of 32 years is divorcing me. And it was painful, painful for my heart, it was painful to see my family divided and reacting so strongly. And so we talked for quite some time about how everything works together for the good. That this was a blessing, and she may not see it now, but it would, she would see the blessing that would come. And as she was driving me to the airport, she had watched what I had done with her son and her daughter. And on the way to the airport, as she was driving me, she turned to me, she said, David, I will accomplish the impossible. <laughs> I said, Maria, tell me, what, what will you do to accomplish the impossible? She said, I will divorce without divorcing. And what this meant was that even though her husband had had an affair, even though he was going to be with another woman in another country, it was Uruguay, even though he was still living in the house and not moved out, even though he was still in the bedroom, she was going to go through a legal divorce, guided by the Holy Spirit, but she was not going to throw him out of her heart. She was going to honor the love that, that is still there. Divorce without divorcing. And so this was a very beautiful time of healing for everyone, everyone involved. Because it's, it's actually not impossible to love. It's, it's very natural for us to love. And it's hard for us to hate. And it's hard for us to have a grievance. So we might as well surrender to God. And give our lives over to God. And give up these silly thoughts. And silly human feelings. Because we were created by God to be extensions of love. And there is no hate in God. So there must be a way that we can live in love and harmony. Thank you.